not even asleep. So I guess we're doing all right. Uh, finally, on, on transit, thank you for that just says way just beautifully uh, into our final uh, uh, item. Uh, J.D. Dillard with the uh, South Georgia Regional Commission is going to give us a quick PowerPoint uh, presentation on the transit uh, on the transit study that's been done, and this, this was a study to gauge interest, need, whatever of uh, public uh, funded uh, public provided transportation. This committee has talked about it in, in the past and recommended previously uh, against uh, public uh, against public funding for capital or operational expenses. Opting out instead for a um, a ride sharing idea. Um, um, now that we have Uber, maybe Lyft later on. And if the state and federal funding mechanisms can get worked out, then work it out that way. Uh, I'm not going to get the weeds on it. But it's just another way of providing, of meeting the end, of meeting the goal, if there is a need that's established for some sort of uh, public transit assistance. So, uh, JD, I'll let you go on with what you've got on this about us urbanized area of transit. Uh, Why the Baker members of the chamber elected like officials? Pleasure to be here again. I am Jenny Gillard from the Regional Commission. We've been studying this uh, for quite a while. But before we get into what the transit reports show, and they are available on our website, I think it's important that we talk about what is the urbanized area because it's not just a simple city issue of city boundaries. The urbanized area covers parts of unincorporated Lowndes County, all up to Moody and Hira, and not just metropolitan, you can say. How about a metropolitan city? It's actually a little bit larger than that when we talked. We gotta be careful when we use these phrases of what we're actually talking about, who's responsible. It's clearly not just one party's problem or one party's issue. It's a community uh, topic we can continue to discuss in greater detail. Uh, now for 14 months, the Regional Commission, through a partnership with the Department of Human Services, operated a pilot shuttle here in the city. Um, we began in October of 2015, and we saw month-over-month -month ridership increase. Those two dips there are in July and September when we announced that it was going to end. That was due to uh, state fiscal year and federal fiscal year funding allocations we weren't sure about. But as soon as we announced they uh, needed more funds, the ridership increased right back up. We asked the riders where they were going. It was interesting to see that about 46 or 50% um, were going to work or either looking for work. Another 25% were using it for educational and medical purposes, so doctor's appointments, wired, RASB issues, or the military, things like that. And another quarter there using it for shopping purposes. And, these are our local retailers, either downtown or the uh, mall area, or in north side shopping. So some interesting statistics on that, and there's more in the report. Now again, we have to compare our shuttle, because everybody likes to compare. So we look at how many miles we covered in the 14 months, and we calculated out 67,000 compared to Hinesville and Albany there as well. You can see the number of buses they use versus our one bus that we essentially operated. And we put Lowndes County Rural Transit, because that's what's currently available here, so we wanted to have a comparison for what people might be more familiar with. Again, the, see the vehicle miles traveled, the vehicle hours that was operated, and then the number of trips that were taken during uh, just one fiscal year, or in our case, about 14 months. So now it breaks down to the cost. We took our operational expenses per vehicle mile, so $4 a mile to operate that show. Compared to Hinesville and everything else, you can see how it stacks up, same thing with operating expense per hour, and then the number of trips per hour um, down at the bottom there. So again, these numbers are pretty comparable, and everybody wants to see, is it worth it? Well, that's when we get into the benefit cost of it. When you look at benefit cost, there's several factors like transportation savings, of vehicle ownership, taxi fare savings, um, and then some of the other benefits include access to health care. You take a $3 public transit ride versus a $900 ambulance ride. Things like that would factor in. And again, we used the Tendell Oliver study that was completed for the MPO in 2016. That's also took a look at this. And we used their figures to factor in. What we came up with was the benefit cost ratio. And down at the bottom, anything over 1.0 shows a benefit to the local uh, community and economy as well. So again, using the low estimates from Tendell Oliver, just under one, but if you use their high estimates, you run them to two. Pilot shuttle as well, a little low, a little high, so you kind of get a little mixed there. 
Now we also use those same plain level financial amounts from Tyndall Oliver to go through how much is this going to cost, how much could it potentially cost. Um, and we ran through about eight different scenarios that are allowed under federal transit uh, funds, particularly 5307 for that urbanized area. So remember, it's not just inner city, it is quite a big way to take higher in booty. And these are some of the figures we came up with. 105,000 miscellaneous in capital there. That's going to be something that's not going to be borne uh, by a third party operator who would maybe operate a transit <coughs> system. But that could include a bus shelter, a pad, things like that. Your maintenance, about 10 to 13% of your rolling stock memory, the, that being the 15 passenger vehicles that were proposed in the study. Um, and then the purchase of service amounts. That's something that looks with DHS, Medicare, Medicaid, anything to offset the local match, which we'll talk about a little bit later. But the overall operation side of it, 864,000. We take out the fare box revenue that could be generated. We used a 7% recovery rate. Um, again, just using a low number at a $1 cost for our net operations, how we came to the $1.3 million figure. So we ran through those eight scenarios. These are the figures we came up with. Uh, we'll bore you with the details, it's all in our report right now. But you can see the federal rate almost double what the local rate in the state because the state does not currently contribute to transit operations. Uh, most of that state funding comes in vehicles and uh, local capital. I believe that is it. So. Again, most of this is all in the reports online. You can download it. Much more detail of how we came to these numbers. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Thank you.